Hey guys, Math 1513 College Algebra at Northern Oklahoma College. We're in Chapter 7 of uh, our College Algebra book. <clears throat> and we have solved systems, uh, of uh, solved linear equations in three variables using other methods. Now we're going to learn about how to solve them using the Gaussian elimination method and Kramer's rule. Now we saw this uh, equation in an earlier lesson, this system. <clears throat> and remember, uh, the way we solved it before was to get rid of these x's and get rid of this y. And that took about three steps. And what we were left with was a system in what we call triangular format. You guys can see the triangle there. And it looked a little bit like this. I'll run through it real fast. Now remember, we uh, added row 1 to row 2 to eliminate the 3x. And then we added row 1 to row 3 to eliminate the 5x. And we have this resulting system here. Now, if I call this row 4 and row 5, I'm going to add row 4 and row 5 together to get rid of this 11y. And we get this system here, which you notice is in triangular format. And now that we know that z equals 0, we can do what's called back substituting and go back and find the y and then go back and find the x and come up with a final answer of 1, negative 2, 0. That's my x, that's my y, that's my z. So that's the point where these three planes intersect. Now we're going to do this same problem using two other methods. We're going to use the Gaussian elimination method and we're going to use Kramer's rule. So I'm going to show you two other ways of doing the same problem. All right, here's our system. I'm going to rewrite it without the x's and y's and z's, and I'm going to use a, a form called an augmented matrix. All right, here's my array of numbers. Where the equal sign went, I'm going to put a straight up and down line, and I'm going to enclose this in brackets. There's my matrix. That's called an augmented matrix. Notice I just took out the x's, y's, and z's. I put a, a vertical line where the equal sign were, and you know, enclosed it in brackets. And now we have an augmented matrix. It's just less cluttered when you take the x's and y's and z's out and just deal with the coefficients. Uh, it uses less paper, less writing, less cluttered. Now our goal is the same. I'm going to get rid of this x and this x, and I'm going to get rid of this y, and we're just going to have one additional step. I want this term and this term, those coefficients, I want them to be a 1, just like this one up here. So I'm going to have a 1, 1, 1 for my leading coefficients, and that's called row echelon form. All right, I'm going to start by leaving row 1 unchanged. The only thing I'm going to change is this 3 and this 5. I want to change those to zeros by adding them to row 1. Now, to eliminate this 3 in row 2, to eliminate that, I need to add it to row 1, but I need that 1 above it to be a negative 3. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 3 and add it to row 2. And I'll note it by writing like this, negative 3 R1 plus R2. And I'm going to put my result in row 2. That'll be my new row. Let's do the scratch work over here. Uh, row 1 is multiplied by negative 3. Row 2 just comes over. And I'm going to add the two together. And I get 0, 3, negative 8, negative 6. That's my new row 2. And see how we've eliminated that 3, that 3x. All right, next step, let's eliminate the 5, this 5x. Now I'm going to do it again by adding it to row 1. So this 1 in row 1 needs to be a negative 5, so that when I add it to the positive 5, it turns into a 0. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 5, add it to row 3, and that will give me the 0 I want in the bottom. So there's how I write my little note, negative 5 R1 plus R3, and I'll do the scratch work off to the side. So there's row 1 multiplied by negative 5. Row 3 just comes over, and now I'm going to add the 2 together and get 0, 11, negative 18, negative 22. There's that 0 I was looking for, and that's my new row 3. All right, so we have zeros for the two lower x's, that 3 in row 2 and that 5 in row 3. We've eliminated those. We've gotten rid of those two x's. Our next step is to get rid of this 1y. <clears throat> All right, so I need to get rid of that 11y. Now, I notice that the 3 and the 11 will both go into 33. So I'm going to make one of them a negative 33 and one of them a positive 33 
add them together, that will give me a zero for the Y, and that will be my new row three. And there's my little note. Row one and row two are staying the same. I'm just going to replace row three. And there's my little note about how I'm going to do it. I'm going to multiply row two by negative 11, and I'm going to multiply row three by three. That will give me my opposite 33, so it will cancel out and turn into zero for that Y. Here's my scratch work. Multiplying row 2 by negative 11 and row 3 by 3. Let that them together. That's going to make my y go. And I get that. Negative 34 and 0. That's my new row 3. And there's my new row 3. Now remember, we just had one additional step that you haven't seen before. We need all of these leading coefficients to be 1. Row 1 already has a leading coefficient of 1. I need to change that 3 to a 1 and that negative 34 to a 1. And, uh, oh, hold on, that's a positive 34. Let's change that real quick. Positive 34. Messed up my math. Okay, so I need to change that 3 and that 34 to 1. So I'm just going to divide row 2 by 3, everything. And I'm going to divide row 3 by 34, and that will give me a leading coefficient of 1. So here's what I have. Row 1 remains unchanged. Row 2 I'm going to divide by 3. Row 3 I'm going to divide by 34. And here's my uh, answer in row echelon form. Okay? Now, what does this mean? Well, let's use back substitution. Remember, this 1 is the coefficient of the z. And this line was our equal sign. So what I'm really saying is that 1z equals 0, or z equals 0. Now that I know what z is, there's my x, y, z. I know my z is 0. I just have to go back and find the y coordinate, and then go back and find the x coordinate. That's called back substitution. So if I uh, go to row 2, our last row 2 there, it says y minus 8 thirds z is going to equal negative 2. Well, I replace my z with 0, since I know what z is now, and solve for y, and y is negative 2. So we have our y coordinate now. And finally, we go back and find our x coordinate. So I uh, take my last row 1 there, and it says x minus 2y plus 3z equals 5. Replace the y and z with the values that we know. Solve for x, and we get x equals 1. And there's our final coordinate. So there's our solution using Gaussian elimination. Okay, we're going to solve the exact same system using something called Kramer's Rule. Now, Kramer's Rule says that if you're looking for your x and y and z, your solution, he says if you use my method, you can take the determinant of x, I'll show you how to find this in a minute, over the determinant of the matrix, and your y coordinate you can calculate if you know the determinant of y over the determinant of the original matrix. And the z-coordinate you can calculate if you know the determinant of the z-matrix over the determinant of the original matrix. Alright, so that's Kramer's rule in a nutshell. If you know all four of these determinants, your determinant of your, that's hard to say, your determinant of your original matrix, of the x-matrix, the y-matrix, and the z-matrix, if you know those four determinants, you can calculate your x, y, z uh, solution. All right, here's our system. And here's our system written as an augmented matrix. Now I'm going to show you another way to write it using matrices. Now here I've separated the coefficients, the numbers in front of the x's and y's and z's. I've separated those coefficients from the answer. And we're going to give these two different names. We'll call them two separate matrices. All right, the first one's called the coefficient matrix, and the second one's called the constant matrix. Now, why am I separating them like this? I'm showing you how to get to Kramer's rule. We're going to need to separate these so that we can figure out those uh, determinants. All right, so know the difference between the coefficient matrix and the constant matrix. All right, I have named my matrix A, and I'm going to find the determinant of A. So I'm going to write it like this. All right, I'm going to call it D for determinant. And instead of brackets, I'm going to use vertical lines. It almost looks like absolute value brackets. So vertical lines. I'm going to find the determinant of our original coefficient matrix. Remember, that was one of the things we were going to have to find for Kramer's rule. So the determinant of the original coefficient matrix. All right, to calculate this determinant, 
I'm going to write down the numbers without the brackets. We're just going to do some scratch work here. That's why I didn't put equals here. I just put a little arrow. This is how we're going to find the determinant. Now, this isn't how the book shows you. It's just a trick that I've picked up that some people do it this way. So write down the original nine numbers there. This only works for square matrices. Notice it's a three by three matrix. That's called a square matrix. And now add the first two columns again. So I copied the first two columns again, the one, three, five, and negative two, negative three, one. All right, what this helps me do is it helps me use this trick right here. I'm gonna multiply, starting at this top one, I'm gonna multiply on a downward diagonal. Now what is that? One times negative three times negative three. That's a positive nine. And I'm gonna add the next downward diagonal. What's that? That's a negative 10. And I'm just going to use parentheses to keep everything all straight here. And I'm going to add the third downward diagonal. What's that? That's a positive 9. So plus 9. So we're going to add the downward diagonals. And here's where it gets a little weird. I'm going to use red for subtracting. We're going to subtract the upward diagonals. So if I start with the 5 and go up, I'm going to subtract that. So 5 times 3 times negative 3 is negative 45. So I'm going to put it in the parentheses here. Now notice it's minus a negative. We'll simplify that on the next step. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so minus 1. And negative 3 times 3 times negative 2 is 18. It's a positive 18 inside the brackets, but remember we're, sub we're, sorry, we're subtracting it. Okay, so let's do that math. 9 plus negative 10 plus 9 minus negative 45 minus 1 minus 18. And make sure you use your calculator on that. So our first determinant is 34. Now we have to find the determinant x, determinant y, and determinant z. All right, here's our determinant of our original coefficient matrix. We just calculated it was 34. Now to calculate determinant x, what I have to do is replace the x column with that constant matrix that we had earlier. So remember all our answers, 5, 9, 3, and we called that a constant matrix. I'm going to replace the x column with that constant matrix and calculate that now. All right, so I copy down the nine numbers. I copy the first two rows again, the 5, 9, 3, negative 2, negative 3, 1. And now I'm going to add my downward diagonals and subtract my upward diagonals. So this one plus this one plus this one gives me 45 plus negative 6 plus 27 and now I minus the three upward diagonals so minus a negative 27 minus a positive 5 minus a positive 54 tells me the determinant of the X matrix is also 34 all right to calculate dy I have to take out the Y column and put in my constant matrix. And it looks like that. So let's calculate this one now. Here's our five rows copied out. Add the downward diagonals. Grab your calculator. And I got negative 68. So the determinant of Y is negative 68. All right, and finally, to find the determinant of Z, I have to erase the Z column and replace it with our constant matrix of 5, 9, 3, and now calculate that. Add your downward diagonals and subtract your upward diagonals. Grab your calculator, and I got equals zero for our z determinant. So here's what we've come up with after all those calculations. Our original coefficient matrix, uh, the determinant was 34. The determinant of x was 34, determinant of y was negative 68, and determinant of z was zero. So now let's apply Kramer's rule. Remember we're looking for x, y, and z. And Kramer says you can find them if you just do this right here, these calculations. And there we found the same answer using Kramer's rule.